All right, you beautiful humans. I'm certainly happy to be jumping in with the rest of Tech YouTube on the Apple event that was really supposed to be about iPhone 13. I mean, I know we had some other releases that were coming, but what I wanted to do is really sit with my thoughts a bit here and not rush on getting this out, but I did wanna hold myself accountable on being wrong about my one prediction. And wrong in the sense that because of the iPhone 13 camera was supposed to be the highlight. But I think another device that should have been held to the one more thing spot at this event, and we will certainly talk about that, but of course, following uh, the order of my notes that I took during the event as I'm tweeting all at the same time, and really the fact that the refresh in the iPad lineup was both nice and confusing all at the same time, and I'll get to the confusing part in a moment. But I still think that the entry level here when it comes to the iPad is a rocking deal in the tablet space because we're talking iPad OS here that is quite optimized. And then when you include, of course, the unchanged 10.2 inch screen and the changed A13 chipset along with the 12 megapixel ultra wide with center stage that we have on the iPad Pro and starting at 64 gigs, finally, I mean, we could edge that up a little bit more Apple, but having that internal storage starting at 329 US where that hasn't really changed for quite some time, that many of you really do have a real option for consumption and getting some of that work done without a bigger financial commitment. And of course, where I want to admit that I was wrong is that this should really be the headliner and that is the iPad mini. I know that it has been heavily talked about in the last 24 hours, but it is seriously like you just received a Ducati ready to not only compete off the line here with that A15 chipset in this refreshed chassis with that 8.3 inch liquid retina display, gorgeous with true tone technology and 500 nits of peak brightness. And what I think is also important too with that P3 color gamut, 12 megapixel camera and the ultra wide on the front with center stage. I think center stage is, is I don't I get excited about it. I don't know, it's kind of fun, but adding in USB type C and now we have created this idea that right off the line, we just blew past the iPad Air Gen 4. And here's where I get a little concerned because the one thing is with some of these releases is that it does make the consumer feel, especially if you've recently purchased the iPad Air Gen 4, and I mean recently as of within the last year, because I can say that your device is still fantastic and I wouldn't feel bad about it. However, for those that follow tech and maybe even like to refresh devices more frequently, this may have you feeling a little deflated or even confused. And I understand that we're talking about a smaller display here as the Air does have that 10.9 inch display. And I know that there are just gonna be benchmarks flying all over the place with these two devices, but I wanna temper expectations in that influence because pure synthetic benchmarks aren't going to showcase this neural engine. And I just want those of you that may be concerned to really keep that in mind once your feed starts filling up with that. But for those that really uh, love that analog or moleskin workflow and thinking about incorporating more of a digital note-taking and organizational approach, like to pretty much to your day-to-day -day and sort of your goals, this is actually where I really think folks will consider a play here, especially with the Apple Pencil. And I really think that this is a deadly combo. And as someone who is going through patient data out in the field, looking through diagnostics and doing education, I can really see this becoming more of a player in that space. And I just realized that I put deadly and when we're talking about healthcare, we probably shouldn't put that together. So let's, let's just move on. Now, of course, one of the more underwhelming releases is the Apple Watch Series 6S. And aside from not getting that squared off design that was rumored and leaked, the screen has more curvature to like over the edge of the body uh, of, of the timepiece but apparently able to display more on that screen, which I suppose it's nice if you're reading some truncated emails or texts, it might be helpful. And I do love my Series 6. And for those of you that may have like a couple iterations older before this one, then this really might be a worthy upgrade for you. But why in the world do they like, I always like, what are they doing with the Series 3? I mean, that is just beyond me, but I'm thinking that just like the SE version that I, I think it's a great deal, they must still be selling these quite well and I, I just can't really recommend it. And of course, I also think that any monitoring features just as, as further diagnostic tools weren't really in the works for this year because being in the middle of a pandemic, there is a, a lot of resource being put elsewhere and it takes a lot of resource to get 
a lot of this pushed through uh, the FDA, a lot of testing, and just a massive amount of R&D and input from medical device companies and resources that are just really limited right now. But I do personally use Fitness Plus, and I know it's not for everyone. I do hold myself accountable as far as health and fitness, and I just think it's just really a nice little ad for those that get a little something more out of it and feel like they have a partner in their fitness journey. Now, of course, the pseudo headliner here, we just got to move right into it, of the event being the iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, and of course the 13 Pro Max. So I think it's pretty much what we expected as far as the cameras and the display, or at least hoping for that display. And starting there, we've got brighter screens for the HDR goodness with a 20% decrease in that notch and apparently no change uh, with the selfie camera. And as much as I'm into the camera, I do think that the 120 Hertz display in the 13 Pro and Pro Max will make a few folks happier when you, when you get to see this in the flesh. And if you haven't seen this in the flesh on an Android device or not, just get ready for all, the, all of the battles that are gonna be happening with those comparisons as well, because they're gonna be lighting up your feeds with which one really is better. And I just wanna remind you here that this linear comparison is subjective to the device and especially the OS. <laughs> but the, the variable refresh rate on the, pro, like the ProMotion display, I, I'm sure that this, this will get picked apart quite a bit. But I'll just be curious to see what the community thinks here when they actually experience this because this isn't on the iPad Pro, but really a smaller device. And I truly love to consume a lot of content on my phone. And so I know that we really didn't get a lot of graphs, you know, at, you know, per Apple, but we did get a lot of numbers tossed out. And I'm looking forward to testing this out because I know that there's always more of a concern that with more power and brighter, higher refresh displays, that this is gonna crush that battery. But really Apple does continue to impress in the, de in the department of the M1. And so as far as having similar architecture in these mobile devices, we could certainly achieve these numbers, but at the cost, of course, of Apple having control of the software and how that this is really utilized within that hardware. And of course, it is no surprise that the camera bump is larger and even more so on the Pro line. And the 13 mini and 13 are still 12 megapixels while having larger sensors, and I believe from what I've heard recycled from the 12 Pro line, but wider apertures all around and the sensor shift that will be provided uh, with ha helping with that optical image stabilization on the main sensor, which definitely will come in clutch for those handheld shots that are on the move. And of course, the triple cameras on the 13 Pro and Pro Max with 12 megapixels, and they are also with those wider apertures and giving us the option for more shallow depth of field and even better low light performance. And of course, the telephoto lens is three times up from two and a half times and the ultra wide being able to even get some of those macro shots. And I'm really curious about this because I don't spend a lot of time in macro photography, but I have been interested in it. And so I look forward to actually testing that out. And of course, personally, I do spend more time in the world of video and I've enjoyed just really having something with me at all times to capture on the go, but I'm really sensitive to my creative friends out there, but I have to say cinematic mode, sorry about that. And of course, the, the ProRes video should be interesting here as well. And getting that rack focus in these devices will be something that needs to be heavily tested because you can often see the focus breathing and the hunting that occurs if this isn't dialed in like correctly. And we'll obviously have to like test these scenarios where you don't have a full set in front of you where the lighting is perfect at all times that are pretty much in the videos that Apple showcases. And I do wonder though about any big color shifts that we may see that it might not bother most of you. And, and I can completely understand that because if you're really trying to use this as a tool in your business, like if it's a secondary or even a third camera option, then this may be important to you. And as far as ProRes on the Pro line with 4K 30 frames per second, and let's not, let's really not debate about 24 versus 30 here, but it does sound like you'll be hanging at 1080p for those of you if you choose the 128 gig model, but let's really not try to flame out here because seriously, Twitter has been lit up over Apple not allowing us, apparently not allowing us to decide how we manage our storage because yes, these files are going to, they're, they're gonna be large. 
and really make you reconsider filming uh, with ProRes. And honestly, I think most won't really care anyway, but let's also keep in mind that without a teardown, this could just come down to that lower capacity not being able to write appropriately to the storage and, and really be efficient as it might be able to do so with the 256 gigs and up. And we have seen this in testing with certain flash memory and SSDs that the lower capacity storage can sometimes, in certain cases, create a slower write uh, depending on the, the task or not create a slower write, but just have an issue with it. So the thing is, enjoy your iCloud storage if you've got it. And I'm sure Apple would love to sell you more of it here, but I think that they also want to make sure that this data is being written properly. So we cool there? And of course, as far as the power and efficiency of the A15 Bionic, we will see whether those two performance cores and four efficiency cores with the four core GPU in the 13 and the five core GPU in the Pro line, if this will be something that we even notice and really going back to that battery life, because what that really looks like, I, you know, I think the performance that may not really change as far as like the power is concerned, although putting that toward like what's happening with the cameras and, and really even the display. But, but I, I really think it just comes down to battery life because I think that's what people are really focused on. And of course the price point is in line as expected, starting at 699 for the mini and 128 gigs, which, which is fantastic. So we're starting at 128 gigs for that. And for another hundred bucks, I mean, if you can squeeze out another hundred bucks and you're not concerned uh, about sort of uh, the size, then 13, you know, that might be the way to go if you can do it. And of course at 999 for the 13 Pro, 1099 for the Pro Max, with the option to add that one terabyte of storage, that is gonna be a bit of a jump there. And I even said this in Clubhouse yesterday that Apple did mention their partnerships with carriers, but with what appears to be like some minor upgrades unless 120 Hertz is really important to you that we're probably gonna be seeing all kinds of deals flying in uh, in the next coming months because to be able to meet the projections that Apple has made and honestly with the discounts on the current, well, previous, but the, the current discounts on the 11 and now the 12 models, this is where I'd see some hesitation with many of you thinking about the cost savings on those devices. So your carriers are gonna have to really wow you with those deals. And I personally just get my devices directly from Apple or if I'm purchasing Android, just straight from the company. But hey, if you really do love your carrier, but maybe you don't love your carrier, but it is a buyer's market. So as much as I often say that if you have a device that works for you, then the upgrade may not make that sense, like make much sense for you. I, I can't speak for you and your desire to have the latest because only you, like only you know where it lands for what you want and how much you wanna spend. So of course, hit me up here or over there on Twitter because Twitter is still lit up over this Apple event. Go out there and rock those faces and I'll catch you right back here on the next one. Whew. Had some onions on my tacos and stuff. Hopefully I wasn't coming through too, too hot, too strong. You know, sometimes that can be a little too much. <laughs>